that damn budget. Are you struggling to get started with your budget or struggling to maintain your budget? Sometimes we let our insecurities about how much money we make or let our fears about who we owe or how much money we owe someone overcomplicate things. But I'm going to simplify things a bit for you today so that way you feel less overwhelmed and you feel more confident about your spending plan. Hi, I'm Shane of The Wealth Vibe and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. And I've been exactly where you are, where you didn't want to look at your bank account and you felt like you didn't make enough money to make it all work. And to be honest, I felt like that recently because I don't have full-time income, but I have $56,000 of student loans to pay. But I have four strategies that have empowered me about my spending plan, and I hope that they'll also empower you with your spending plan so that you can feel a little bit more confident. So let's just relax a little bit and take a deep breath, and hopefully you're eager to learn about the strategies that will help you with your budget and help you feel control. So before we get started, make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up so that way other people are able to learn about these strategies so that we all can feel like we can win with our money. It's really important that we track our spending because it's really going to give us a good idea about where we're starting at and then we can make tweaks to that so that we can improve and win with our money. So what I highly recommend is if you're just getting started with creating a spending plan is that you want to pull your bank accounts, you want to pull your credit cards, and maybe even you want to pull receipts, especially if you tend to spend money in cash because we don't have any records of those transactions aside from receipts. You want to pull all those things so that you can review them. And then when you're reviewing them, I would suggest that you go back at least three months and review your spending habits for the past three months. And what you're looking for is how much money am I spending and what percentage of my income am I spending on certain categories. So some of those categories could be like housing, food, entertainment, clothing, and all sorts of things. And you'll want to you know, figure out how much money you're spending and what percentage of income you're spending. And once you've done that, you want to see how you feel about it. You want to think about, okay, do I feel like I'm spending too much money in this category? Do the numbers tell me that I'm spending too much money in this category? Or do I just feel that way? And you want to tease those things out. But then once you figure that all out, you want to go deeper and see what are you actually spending your money on. Because you might say on the surface like, oh, I spent $200 on food every single month. That's no big deal. Until you start to realize that, wait, I, I'm spending all my money at Dunkin' Donuts. Like I'm not actually getting like decent meals here and I want to actually spend my money on something that makes more sense. So although the dollar value might look okay to you, some of the things that you're actually spending on might not really be okay with you. So you just want to do an assessment of everything that you're doing with your money because it's really important that you have a clear idea of what you have been doing in the past so that way you can make changes for the future that will really empower you and feel like you're actually doing things that you really want to do with your money. A bonus tip that I have is if you've already been budgeting, it's important that you also track your spending every once in a while because sometimes we thought we cut out certain spending habits months ago only to realize that we've slowly been picking those spending habits back up or we start to pick up new spending habits to replace the old ones and we don't realize that they're actually impacting our financial goals. So even if you've been budgeting, I suggest that every you know quarter or so that you review your spending and look at how much money you're actually spending in certain categories and to see if there are any places that you've slipped up with your spending to see if you can realign yourself and get back on track. After you've already reviewed your spending plan, you have a really good idea of what you tend to do with your money. And you also have a good idea of what you want to do differently. So after that, you want to create a spending plan. 
And what I suggest is that with your spending plan, you consider a few different things. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to cover something that Dave Ramsey calls the four walls. And so that's really everything, all the essentials that you need to live on a day to day basis. So that's your housing, your transportation, your food, utilities and clothing. So you want to make sure that you either pay all the bills that are related to your four walls or you set aside money for those things so that way you know that you're always covered with your four walls. Then after you've already set aside money for those things in your spending plan, you want to start looking at any debts. So if you're debt free, that's like awesome. But me, I have debt. So I need to account for that in my spending plan. And the reason why I say that you need to do that first is because or really secondly after you pay all your four walls is because you want to make sure that you're starting to free up money for yourself so that you can later use that money to save for the things that you really want or to spend it on the things that you really want so you want to prioritize paying off debt so that way you can start to reclaim the money out of your paycheck that now has someone else's name on it so you want to prioritize your debts and see how much money you know you can pay in addition to the minimum payment towards those debts. Then after you've allocated money in your spending plan to pay debts and really pay a little extra towards your debts, you want to see where you need to save money. So really I should be saving or investing money. So you might wanna put money in an IRA or you might want to save money towards a goal that you have. And I'm gonna to touch on goals or other types of saving and strategies that I have for that a little later on in the video. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. But you wanna make sure that you're prioritizing saving or investing after you've paid off debts. And then what you wanna do, this is the part that you're gonna love <laughs> as part of your spending plan, is that you want to actually put aside any remaining money that you have towards spending on the things that you love. So the reason why this is really important to include in your budget is because if you are so focused on paying off debt or even saving up for a goal, like sometimes you know people are saving thousands and thousands of dollars to buy a house or to pay for their wedding, and we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, so that means that they're doing a lot of hard work, and sometimes they're sacrificing a lot. And without those things that you really love in your budget or in your spending plan, you're going to want to give up. You're going to feel defeated at times. But by spending money on things that you love every once in a while is going to help you to stay on track and you don't feel like you're sacrificing everything in your life. So I highly recommend that you spend really well on the things that you love. With the remaining money that you have so that doesn't mean that you have thousands of dollars or maybe you make enough money that you'll have thousands of dollars left over but you know for the average person like me and you you have maybe a couple hundred or a little less than a hundred dollars to spend on something that you really love and it's really important and think of it as kind of like when you're going on a diet you know so you tend to have like those cheat days where on Saturday you can eat a burger or you can have a slice of cake or something like that. And the purpose of it is just to make sure that you stay on track with the ultimate goal, but you're able to satisfy something or you're able to, you know, just feel like yourself again. Because I'm telling you, when you are on aggressive payoff <laughs> journeys like I have been on or aggressive saving journeys, you will start to feel like you don't even know yourself anymore and so having money in your spending plan set aside for things that you really enjoy or really love is really going to help you to stay on track so those are the things that you need to put as part of your spending plan and you just are going to have to wiggle things around until you can have those things fit in but make sure that you are prioritizing these things in the order that I laid out. So you wanna make sure that your four walls are covered, then you want to pay any debts that you have, and then you want to save or invest, and then you want to spend money on the things that you love. So it's all good and well to plan, right? But where the plan starts to fall apart is in your actions. 
actions. So you want to make sure that you don't have to leave up certain parts to you remembering things or you actually following, following through on certain aspects of your spending plan. So you want to make sure as much as possible that you're automating things. So you want to make sure that things from your four walls, like your housing, like your mortgage or your rent is automatically paid, right? Or you want to make sure that your debts are automatically paid with that extra amount, right? So you want to make sure that you're scheduling payments ahead of time. And you want to make sure that you're automating your savings. So that way you don't have to think about your spending plan because what tends to happen is that over time you get bogged down by constantly checking your bank account, by constantly um, crunching the numbers, and just by constantly thinking about it all. But by automating everything in your spending plan, you can take a step back and just know that everything is being handled according to the plan that you've already set. And you also don't have to worry about you getting in the way of your own self. So you wanna make sure that you automate everything. Like, Automate everything, for sure. Automate everything. So you wanna make sure that you're putting on those automatic transfers from you know your check-ins account to your savings account or your automated ACH or direct deposits into you know certain accounts or automatic withdrawals from your paychecks or automatic bill pays. You wanna make sure all of those things are in place because it's going to give you a lot of freedom. So I will tell you this. I know a lot of people don't like to automate because they feel like, what if I don't have enough money? What if I'm going to get an overdraft? Or what if, or what if, or what if? And I know because my mom is one of those people, to be honest. Like I tell her all the time, we share a, a uh, cell phone plan. I have a family plan where I'm the account holder on it, but my mom pays a huge chunk of the bill because she tends to pay for my other siblings and herself and my father. And so she pays a large chunk of the bill. So I tell her, why don't you just automate the payment? Because we know that the payment is gonna be a certain amount every single month, just automate it. And she's like, what if I don't have the money? And the thing is, you don't have to worry about what if you don't have the money because you've already set a place, a plan in place where you know that you will have the money to do what you want to do. So don't worry about what ifs because you already know. Earlier I talked a little bit about savings and it's really important that you incorporate savings as a part of your spending plan. And there are certain things that we tend to think about when we are saving. So usually we think about our savings in terms of things that we aspire to have or aspire to do or want to do. There are goals that we want to achieve, right? So for example, that might be like a trip to Bali that you wanna take. That's something you aspire to do. Or you might want to get married one day. So you might have a savings goal for a wedding. Or you might want to have a house that you own. So you'll have a house savings goal because if these are things that you look forward to doing. But then there are a whole class of other things that you don't necessarily aspire to do or look forward to paying or anything like that. And those are things that you would call a sinking fund. So it's really important that you have sinking funds set up within your spending plan so that you can feel really in control. So what a sinking fund is, it's basically money that you set aside for known expenses. So it's known in the sense that you know at some point this is coming, gonna happen. You might not know the date or you might know the date when it's gonna happen, but you know it's going to happen at some point. So you are proactive about this issue and you put money aside for the day that it will come up. So it's a little different from an emergency fund because it's something that you know is gonna happen. Well, I guess you, you might argue that an emergency fund is something that, or emergency is something that you know is gonna happen, but this is a little different. So when I'm talking about something that you know is gonna happen, I'm talking more so in the sense of like, your car insurance is gonna be due. You know that you're gonna have to do repairs on your car one day, or you might want to do repairs on your home, or you might owe property tax one day. These are things that you know are going to happen and things that you're going to have to cover out of your, your income. And so you wanna make sure that you have money set aside 
for these things when that event does come up. So that way you feel a little bit more control over your money and you aren't feeling like you're surprised or having to scramble and feeling anxious and worried about where you're going to get the money to pay for these different things. And I wanna tell you that sinking funds make a huge difference in how you feel about your money because you're gonna feel so much more controlled. You're gonna feel so much better that you already are two steps ahead of the game when it comes to having money set aside for whatever issue does pop up. And so I'm gonna tell you, for me, sinking funds have been really invaluable because this summer my AC went out in my car and I was able to feel okay about it despite the, top, the fact that I don't have a full-time income. And I was able to feel okay that I had money set aside specifically for car repairs. And so when my AC went out, although I was frustrated that it was gonna cost $500, I knew that I had money set aside to just pull from that so that I didn't have to delay. Now I did have to delay because the part wasn't available and blah blah blah, but I didn't have to delay because of money. And it's going to give you so much ease and so much you know, peace of mind by having sinking funds in place. So you want to make sure that you're putting aside money for known expenses as a part of your spending plan because it's gonna make you feel so much more control about your money and about your spending plan so that way you don't ever feel overwhelmed and you don't ever feel like you can't do it or where is this money going to come from? This is going to help you to have control. I have a few resources for you that are going to help you with tracking your spending and developing a spending plan and helping you to automate your finances and creating those sinking funds. And so if you're interested in learning more about those resources, I'll have them here in this video here for you. And I hope that I'll see you over there. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification button so that I can see you in the next video. I appreciate you for watching and I hope to see you next time.